Hello and welcome back, cool cats and groovy chicks. Welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. Anyway, I have a special lesson for you tonight about modulations. This was a request I had from a subscriber to show how I modulate or change keys from one key to another within a song. And this occurs in a lot of songs that are written by great composers. They change keys a lot in the bridge or throughout the song either temporarily or you know, for a longer period of time. We're going to talk about those. And before that, two of the songs I'm going to use are by Duke Ellington, the great American composer and musician. And he said this. He said, By and large, jazz has always been the kind of man you wouldn't want your daughter to associate with. <laughs> he also said this more seriously. It is becoming increasingly difficult to decide where jazz starts or where it stops, or where Tin Pan Alley begins and jazz ends, or even where the borderline lies between classical music and jazz. I feel there is no boundary line. And that's true. And we're going to show you that in this uh, video tonight about modulations, modulating or changing keys in jazz. Here we go. Starting out, modulation is most commonly used as the process of changing from one key to another. And that can be from changing from one tonic to another tonic or one tonal center to another tonal center. And it may be involve a change of key signature, but not necessarily. Uh, modulations create structure and form in many of the pieces that we play and add interest to them. In other words, most of our great American songbook has changes of key, usually in the bridge. Now, there's another term called tonicization. That involves just quickly moving into another key, but not establishing it. Modulation means that it usually involves a cadence, which establishes and, and holds it to that key for a period of time, maybe just a couple of measures. And that first chord that is introduced is a dominant seventh. In other words, if I'm moving from C and I want to move to the four chord, a C7, the dominant now, takes me to the one. So it's always the five of a one, of a new one. In other words, if I wanted to move to G, if I'm in the key of C and I want to move to G, I can introduce it by playing the D7 to the G. So it's always a five, one, five in front of the new one, or the new tonic, or the new tonal center. Now I'll give you examples for every pitch in a chord. Here's some examples. Most songs that are, say, in the key of C, they end on the tonic chord with the tonic note, so they end on a C. If I make that a C7 now, it takes us to F. If I take that same note and put it in an A flat chord, it's the third of the A flat, now it takes us to D flat. If I put that same note now into the four chord, and F7, it takes us to B flat. In other words, it's a five to going to one. If I, same note, if I take it as a seventh of a D7, it wants to move to G, see? So, that 5-1 relationship is important to know on any, any particular note, particularly an ending note. So if I want to move up a half step from C, which is the most common modulation, is to go up a half step. Just check out Barry Manilow for that one. But anyway, uh, gives a rise to the music and makes it more exciting, more interesting. It ten tends to build up the drama. So if you end on C, let's do a 2-5-1 in the C. Then if I go, I can right from there go to A flat, dominant seventh, and it takes me to D flat. I'm going to give you an example of that. I'm going to give you a few examples, but I want you to know that it can be a 5 to a 1, or it also can be a 2 5 1. So in the 2 5 1, the C now, that can become a C minor 7. Then the F7 will take us to B flat. Also, it can be a 3 of a chord. Now it can take us to A minor, D7, G. Another one would be, it could be the five of a chord, be F minor seven to B flat seven to E flat. So you have all these varieties, whether you use a dominant seventh on a five one or use a two five one. The rule is any chord, major or minor, can be approached by its related five and also its related two five one. In other words, two can precede the five. So example again, end on a C now. I can go to five of D flat with that same note. Now if I wanted to put a two five, I'd have to change this note. I would have to go here, there, like that. 
So this is written out for you, so if this is a little confusing, check out the sheet. Now I want to give you examples of how this is done in songs, specific tunes. The first example comes from the song In the Wee Small Hours of the Morning. I picked that out as a good tune to show modulating up a half step because it starts on its one, you know, the melody starts on the one or the tonic note like this. And it's in the key of C so that makes it easy. So now here's the end of the song. We're going to take it from the end and show you the modulation. Go back to the original key like that, but now this time I'm going to modulate. I'm on that one now, I go to A flat seven. See now how that works so nicely and it's smooth because it's the common tone. The C, the root, now becomes the third of the A flat seven, that's five of D flat, so. That's the most common one like that. You can always use that one now whenever you want to modulate up a half step. And here's another example. The next example is Mac the Knife. Now that's a song that was recorded by Bobby Darren and they modulated up half steps every chorus, which was a very common thing to do in, in popular music and standards. So like um, it goes, And then the end of it is, I mean the key is C of course, ends on, the melody note ends on that 6 now, so I need to change this note to go to the A flat, I can go down or up, but I'm going to go down, see now I'm up, now I'm up a half step, the D flat, now if I wanted to put the 2 5 in there I could go, up to this note. I put the E flat minor 7, A flat 7 taking me to the D flat. And I'm in now in a half step higher. So that's an example of, and it modulates every chorus. So it can, from the end of that uh, chorus in D, you'd be here. From D flat. Now to go to the E. I moved up to one half step each time. Now if you wanted to modulate from one key to another within a tune, in other words to modulate the whole tune or part of it, I'm going to give you an example of that moving up a minor third. Now that's, if we're in the, if we're in the key of C to move up a minor third we want to go to E flat. So 5 of E flat would be B flat 7, that would be the 5 chord. The 2 chord would be F minor 7, B flat 7, the 5 chord to E flat. So we, we use the F minor, which should be common, the common tone of that note. So now like taking Misty, you know, starts out like this in C. So now here's the end of the song. playing fills, but I got into E flat there now, you see, C, F minor, D flat, E flat, so, I'm um, in E flat, I moved up a minor third, and that's a really nice one to use, you know, in different tunes, to modulate up a minor third, just by using, going to the four minor, being two, then the five of the new key, B flat to E flat. If we were in, in G, we want to go up to B flat, we go C minor, F7, B flat, like that. So now you want to make it musical, so, so you need, might need some fills.
So I'm going to give you some examples that are important modulations that exist within well-known songs and how composers use them in order to create an interesting melody and an interesting set of chord changes. So like, Fly Me to the Moon, right? It's in A minor, or relative to C major. So on. Now at the end of the song we have this. It resolves to C major. Now we have to get back to the relative minor, so the two, five of A minor. So now the two becomes half diminished because why? Because the minor scale has that, you know, natural minor scale has that note in it. So natural F. So we want to make the B chord the two of, so it's the second step. Then the five can have a flat nine in it like that, resolving to A minor. So at the end of the song now, back to the relative minor and those are just chords there's no melody there but it's getting us back to the relative minor so there you have it for the two five into the relative minor so these examples are all written out for you on Fly Me to the Moon, it's relative minor of A minor, ends up on C major, it's relative major, then we get back to it using the 2-5 into A minor. It's just down a half step. Same thing for Autumn Leaves and also My Funny Valentine is in a relative minor. And C minor ends up in E flat at the end. Last, last part of his... flat. Now to get to the relative minor, just down a half step, half diminished chord, related five, altered with a flat nine, takes us to the C minor. So that's a really common one to move in, it's used in classical music a lot, moving between the relative major and the relative minor. You might be asking, well, how do you do it the other way? In other words, how do you get from the relative minor to the relative major? Well, that's easy because you just go to the four chord of the A minor, and that's the two of, of the relative major, and then the G7, of course, that's altered now, and then takes us back to C. So like in A minor, C is just the third degree, you see? Like it's the, it's the, the minor is the sixth degree of the C scale, the third degree of the A minor scale is, is the relative major. So we just need the D minor 7, G7 up, dominant there to C. Now the next one I want to use is, this is an example of going down a minor third on a bridge. And the song I'm going to use is Sunny Gets Blue. Now we're going to take it in the key of C. Now it goes to A major. So now how are we going to get to that? Well, similar way, but it's, it's instead of being a relative minor, it's a, it's going to be a major chord, so like this, it goes... It goes to that note, now that's the two chord, and it is a, it is a half diminished, with the, this is an eleventh up here, that's the common tone now, which is the tonic of the five chord, major now. A major. Like that. Interesting one. I'm going to show you how we get back to the original keys later on, but that's taking it down now a minor third on the bridge. Now this allows for the song to have variety, to have a fresh sound, have the, uh, you know, not be just stuck in one key, but to actually modulate within the song to another key that's going to make it sound like it's moving into interesting places and more, you know, it's more fresh sounding with a new key. Whether you think of these key changes as actual key changes, just modulations just could mean you're shifting the tonal center for a period of time.
enough to create a new cadence. In other words, that it's a strong sense of the new key. But then you can go immediately out of it. You know, like on the song, all of all the things you are, you're all over the place there, changing key like within every two measures or so. But anyway, the next one that's really interesting is body and soul, and this is in the key of D flat. So it's not an easy key to play in, but it, it goes up a half step on the bridge, uh, and then gets back to originally gets back to D flat later on. But anyway, the last part of it is this. So we get now just the two five. So there you have now I'm in D major. See that's enough of a D major to create like an a cadence now. Two five three six two five one. So you know in D. Then it goes immediately D minor. Okay. But the important thing to hear is to see how it the transition is to. Up to the two five. Now we're in D major. So that's up a half step for body and soul on the bridge. Part two will show you how to get back to the original key or the tone, original tonal center because we have to get back, or usually we do at some point, unless we're just modulating into a new key and taking it from there. But on these songs where the bridge goes somewhere else, they have to get back, and we'll show you that later on or in part two. Now help up a major third in the bridge. We just went up a minor third in the or we went up a half step in the bridge for body and soul. Now we're gonna go up a major third here in the bridge. So that would be going from C to E. Okay, so we're gonna end now that's if I had you. But instead of being E major, it's gonna be E minor, but it's still up a major third to a minor key. So like the last part of it is Now that note works great with the modulation because it's an F half diminished and it's one of the notes in the chord. It's actually the five, the flat five, and then it becomes the flat nine of the B chord, B7 dominant chord now, and then the melody is that's the bridge in E minor. See, so we went up a, a minor, a major third to a minor key, E minor. There's your cadence, one, six, two, five. You see, so that's a strong sense of the tonal center of E minor. So you have this last. And then continuing. Or you might be asking, he's showing us how the composer modulated from one key to another in the bridge, but he doesn't show us how he's getting back to the original key. I'm going to show you that on this example, and it's, it's called The Song Is You by Jerome Kern. It goes like this, it's in C. Oh, and so on. Anyway, the end of it is like this. Ends on C there, then it's an F7. Then up the F sharp minor seven flat five with that note being the flat five. And now the flat nine of the B7 taking us to E major. There's your cadence, the two five into E major again. This is kind of fascinating. Two five into A flat minor now. C sharp minor seven, F sharp seven, F sharp minor seven to B seven. Ends up there now, and that's the melody note, which is the one of the chord, becomes now the major seventh of the original key. So it's a common tone modulation. In other words, retaining the common tone of the B seven there, and also moving chromatically up a half. It's really ingenious. 
Probably two of the most ingenious songs ever constructed harmonically are this one and the next one, and they're both by Jerome Kern. The next one is All the Things You Are. Jerome Kern was the master of modulation, in other words, changing tonal centers within a song constantly, you know, like every few measures, you know, like he, all the things you are is a perfect example. Now, these, this is a song that you can sing. It's a song that wrote, written during a period of time. And this is popular music. This is not modern music. It's not Berg or Stravinsky or something or even Chick Corea or Herbie Hancock. This is, this is actual music that has form in terms of the, the, the cycle of fifths and so on, but it's moving all over the place and it's all modulating in, in using the common tone, you, using, you know, the common tone type of concept. You know, like here we have... Starts out in the relative minor, ends up in the relative major. Ends up in C major, then C minor. E flat major. A flat, up a half step, common tone, G major. Now we're all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. G major, right? That's established. Then we're going to go into E flat. E major. Now here's where he makes the modulation back to the original key. He's in E major. How are we going to get the F minor? Well, that's easy. It's just up a half step right, and it's this common tone again. But he puts the five in there. He puts the five altered. That's pretty modern and progressive to put that chord, a C7 flat 9 sharp 5 in there to get us back to F minor and, and the rest of the... And he wraps it up beautifully. So check out the song, All, of, All the Things You Are. It's one of the greatest songs ever written. I'm going to conclude with a couple of examples from the great Duke Ellington, and um, one of my favorite composers, American Songbook and so on, jazz composers, and the song Sophisticated Lady, which is in uh, A flat. There's your A flat major now. The end of the uh, A section going into the bridge, he goes down a half step in the bridge from A flat to G like that. Now he goes like, so he does it by the way of the 2-5-1 again. There's your A flat chord now, up a half step. See down there, now he got into the G major, which is a half step below the key, by going up to the 2, up a half step to the 2, in half diminished, and the D7, the 5, in flat 9. These are really clever moves. But there you see now how he did that. So he got it into the new key of G major, down a half step. And the next one is going to show you common tone again. This last example comes from Duke Ellington's pen, and it's do nothing till you hear it from me. And it's going to be moving in an unusual way. Well, it's down a minor third again, but we're in the key here now of B flat. There's no transition chord, but you could put it in if you wanted. Like that. So you see there, he's not using a transition chord. He's just going to the new note, and it works. G flat. See, so it's just common tone and moving directly without 
a 2-5 or a 5 chord. So the use of common tone, again here it is. See? Would be the major 7 of G flat. So they have a lot in common. So I can move easily between the two keys. And then from there. See, it's perfect. Perfect modulation, perfect use of uh, fresh sound and how modulation works to enhance the tune and give it a structure and a beautiful sound and contrast between sections. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch and those that asked me about the Alter Dominant Ego Man, he went back to Newark. I think he got a little discouraged because of the thumbs down. You know, he's a kind of a sensitive guy, but we'll, we'll forgive him for that. Anyway, he'll be back one of these days. And until next time, you know, I'll say thanks for joining me. Please write to me. I hope you got something out of this. I will continue with part two to show you how, get, how to get out of a key. Once you've changed keys, how to get back to the original key. And until next time, I'll say, in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, God rest his merry soul, swing loose. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.